Hey soul surfers, welcome back to Waves of Consciousness with My Spiritual Ocean. My name is Alicia. Today we are riding the brain wave. It's like a brain mind manifestation wave. <laughs> I just wanted to say brain wave. We are going to be talking about the conscious mind and subconscious minds and why things don't seem to be changing despite you focusing on what it is you want. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so you're doing everything right. You're following the rules. There are not really any rules when it comes to manifestation. You're focusing on what you want, but nothing seems to be changing. Why is that? Well, in order to understand this, we have to understand the different levels of the mind. There are three different levels of the mind. There is the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the unconscious mind. We're going to go through all of these different levels of the mind and talk about their characteristics and traits and what it has to do with you and your manifestations. So let's start it off with the conscious mind. Now the conscious mind are the thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that you are aware of. They are in your conscious awareness. The conscious mind is also the logical and reasoning mind. And as we know, manifestation is not logical, so that's going to play into things at some point too here. So let's talk about the characteristics of the conscious mind. The conscious mind is low and limited capacity, so it can do things slowly. It takes its time. It's not as quick and fast acting. The conscious mind is also aware of time, so it can think of things in terms of past and future and discern things in that kind of manner, so it makes time relevant. The conscious mind also understands language, so if you speak English, you may be understanding this here. If you speak a different language, you may have subtitles on that match that language so that you can understand and relate to the words that are being said. That's your conscious mind at work. The conscious mind is also open to new things and it's creative. So when you want to change your life and you want to experience things differently, that's a conscious decision that you're making. It's coming from the conscious level of your mind. The conscious mind also has the ability to accept and reject information. So when you're working on your manifestations, this is why it's important to challenge certain thoughts and get curious about your thoughts and information that you are receiving and accept or reject any information on a conscious level that is not in line with what it is you want to experience. And as I've already mentioned, the conscious mind is the critical, rational, and logical mind. So it uses reasoning to come to conclusions. Your conscious mind is 5% of your brain. So 5% of what is going on in your life is consciously aware to you. Most everything else is running subconsciously until it is brought to the conscious level. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get into the subconscious mind. And finally, the conscious mind knows the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So that's why when you're doing your meditations or visualizations and you're in the subconscious mind in that meditative state and then you become more consciously aware, your mind can say, hey, that wasn't real. That didn't happen. It was only in our mind. So the conscious mind is the only one that has the ability to discern what is real and what is imagined. So now that we've dove more into the conscious mind, let's talk about the counterpart to the conscious mind. That is the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is what you have learned and stored in your brain and your body. And the subconscious mind filters information to keep you safe. That is the sole purpose of the subconscious mind. It is to protect you and keep you alive. The subconscious mind is also known as your emotional mind. So as we know, emotions are energy and motion. So this makes your subconscious mind your energy mind or your kind of energy body. That's why you can consciously not remember something. But let's say you're in a situation and your body tenses up and you have no idea why. Your subconscious mind has some kind of association where this scenario is similar to something in the past that doesn't feel safe, so your body is going to respond. 
This is why I talk so much about emotional regulation and emotional release work when it comes to manifestation and just living life in general. Because when you process that emotion, that changes the trajectory of the neural pathways in your brain and gives it new associations. So whatever situation you're in doesn't feel unsafe anymore. Now, the challenge with this is that if you are in a highly triggering situation, your logical mind, the conscious mind, shuts off. There is no rationale. There's no reasoning with it. You are just in your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind is reacting to keep you safe in that situation. So in order to discern the information, you have to learn to process those triggers and release them so that when you come back into your conscious state, you can reflect and change the narrative about what happened and really discern about what in that situation might have triggered you. If you're even consciously aware of it, you might not be. And that's okay. If you're processing that emotion and releasing that information from the body, the body and subconscious mind then are going to feel safe, safer in that scenario. And the more you remind it and process any emotions that come up in those triggering situations, your subconscious mind is going to learn that there's nothing dangerous about the situation that you're in naturally. So that kind of ties into the next point I have about the subconscious mind, which is the subconscious mind is a data bank of all information and experiences that you've ever had in your life, all of them, every face you've seen, even if you don't consciously remember it. That's why sometimes in your dreams, you might see people and you kind of know them, but you don't know them. You have seen that person out in the world somewhere and your subconscious mind filtered that information and put it in your data bank for record keeping. It's basically a little record keeper. So the subconscious mind then takes all that information and it makes associations in conjunction to those experiences in order to survive. So it's going to filter out the most important information to keep you safe. So if you were in a situation where your life was in danger in the past, so I always use the example of childhood, let's say, okay, so because that's a big part of where we get our subconscious beliefs and our experiences, So let's say in childhood, right? Because I like to think of this in the terms of the concept of love. When you think about it logically, love is not scary. (laughs) Love is love. It's something that most people desire. Well, I feel that at the core, we all truly actually desire it. But our conscious mind has kind of, or subconscious mind has put a little block on it and said, ah, that's not safe. So we're going to stay away from that. But anyway, so love Love is a beautiful, wonderful thing if you have those kinds of associations, but you can learn that love is dangerous. So in childhood, if you had parents that weren't available or were not taking care of you physically or emotionally, your life was at stake because you depended on those people. So in response, your subconscious or conscious mind, you may have consciously decided, hey, I need to take care of myself and made that connection. And so now your subconscious mind, anytime someone tries to take care of you, you may push that away because you can't trust it because the people that you depended on in childhood didn't take care of you in the ways that you needed. So There, the subconscious mind has made a negative association with relationships and love as being dangerous. If I let these people get too close, they're just going to abandon me. So I need to take care of myself. And you kind of see that loop form where the experience happened, the conscious mind gave it a meaning, and then it cycles back around. And then you start experiencing that and it reinforces that until you break the pattern and consciously decide and teach yourself hey, just because this happened before doesn't mean it's going to happen again. And you can change the trajectory of those experiences. All right, I feel like I went off on a whole other little wave there. But you know, it's important information. We go where the where the waves take us around here. But let's get back to the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind doesn't have an opinion or judgment. It's just doing its job. The conscious mind is the one that makes the decisions. It's the one that assigns meaning. It's the one that puts judgment on things. The subconscious mind is the limitless part of you once it has those barriers removed to feel limitless. Now, this is something very fascinating that I learned. 
And it's that the, the higher the emotional charge that you have in an experience, the more data the subconscious is collecting. So if, let's say you're just walking down the street and nothing's happening, right? You're just walking down the street, taking a stroll, and it's a really nice day. And you're just walking along. The subconscious isn't collecting too much data there. It's it's collecting, it's seeing, it's noting things, but it's not putting a marker on it, <laughs> okay? But let's say you're walking down the street and all of a sudden a bobcat comes out of nowhere, okay? And this bobcat looks like it's going to attack you. Your subconscious mind is going to collect a lot more information because you might be in a state of fear, depending on your response to this, right? What you've learned about bobcats, um, your experience with bobcats in the past, maybe even just regular cats, right? If you have a negative experience with cats, your subconscious associated that with cats in general, that bobcat's going to feel scary too, <laughs> okay? But let's say you have a high level of fear in that moment. Your subconscious is going to collect everything that's going on around you in conjunction with that bobcat. You don't know that this is happening because it's all subconscious. It's just collecting data. That's what it does. So anything that you've had associated in that moment. So let's say, well, you're exercising, right? So if you're taking a walk, you might not want to take a walk now because your subconscious mind has deemed walking as dangerous because you saw that bobcat last time. So your subconscious is going to kind of hold you back in a way. And uh, you might say, mm, I probably shouldn't take a walk because last time there was a bobcat. So then it scares you out of doing something that you actually want to do because of that experience. And this is where the conscious mind comes in. This is where the conscious and subconscious pair very well together. So the conscious mind can give a new meaning to things once you're in that logical state. So in the case of the bobcat, if you see the bobcat, you're probably going to react right away. You're either going to go into fight, flight, or freeze. I don't know if the fawn response. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Those are the four types of responses, right? Fight, 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 flight, freeze, and fawn. So whatever your nervous system deems appropriate in that moment, it's going to do that. You're not there thinking about what to do and you're just going to, something's going to happen because you're probably very highly emotionally charged in that moment. But after the fact, when you come out of that fear or whatever emotions, maybe there's shock, maybe there's all different emotions you can experience in that correct terror Um perhaps. But when you come out of that, your logical mind can then say, hey, next time I could try this. And again, the more you practice, this is also again where I think of it this way. So when manifestation coaches talk about visualization and they say, oh, just imagine and visualize yourself and play the script in your head that you want. Let's say you've done that. And then you get in the situation and then you freeze. You're like, I'm going to tell this person how I feel. I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm going to set boundaries. And then you're in the situation and your body fight, flights, freezes. <laughs> okay. And it's like, uh. So this is where the mind can help you along, but your body and your subconscious mind are going to remember things differently. It's going to respond based on past associations. So yes, mental scripts are important. Visualizing things the way you want them to go, but the embodiment part of it is so important. And same with the body and somatic work and emotional release work, because you're going to release those associations to those past experiences to pave the way for you to actually play out your mental script. And sometimes people can do that and work through the fear. It just depends how heightened the emotion is uh, and what your body's doing. But the first step to correcting that is to notice your body. For example, if you have to set a boundary or you're trying to set a boundary, you might notice your heart racing. You might notice your breathing get uh, heavier or more shallow. Um, everybody's different. So observing that brings you to the present moment for you to give it a new meaning when your body is able to calm back down. But first, you have to meet yourself where you're at. Okay, I think I went off on another wave, <laughs> as we do around here. Let's get back to the subconscious mind. There's just so much good information about the subconscious mind. So 
But let's talk more about the characteristics of the subconscious mind. We've talked about some things. The subconscious mind, as I mentioned, it's high capacity. So it just does things really quickly. It knows how to filter information out really fast so that you can respond right away without having to think. That is its job. That's why the conscious mind kind of takes a little vacation when you're in a heightened state because the subconscious has to do something. It has to react or respond to keep you safe in whatever way it deems necessary in whatever situation you're in. Unlike the conscious mind, the subconscious mind is only in the present. Everything is happening now. So all those past experiences, the conscious mind can say, oh, that happened in the past. If it's unprocessed, your subconscious mind is bringing that forward, past information, and it is using it now in whatever situation you're in. That's why they say a lot of times when people are reactive, they're not actually reacting to whatever's going on. They're reacting to something in the past that happened. And so the subconscious is just reliving that and sending the same signals to say, hey, we need to handle this until you consciously make the decision to shift things. Now, in contrast to the conscious mind, the subconscious mind does not speak or understand language. It only speaks in energy and emotion and associations. The way I like to think about this is when, so for example, let's say someone's speaking a language that you don't understand, right? But you're trying to read what they're telling you. So you might read their facial expressions. You might read their body language. Um, You're going to feel some type of energy in the tone and the way that they're speaking to you as well. So it's similar to that. So you don't know what they're saying on a conscious level. They could be saying something that doesn't match their energy, but you're going to go with the energy because that's what you're reading. That's what you're feeding into. That's what you're feeling. So the subconscious mind doesn't know language. Again, this is why I say affirmations will only take you so far. It is important to choose affirmations that have words that mean something to you that you want to experience. But what really matters is the state that you're saying those affirmations in. Let's say you don't feel safe. Let's do that fearful state, right? You're not feeling safe. But then you're telling yourself, I'm safe. I'm safe. Your body's like, no, (laughs) we're not safe. We're not. So there's a disconnect there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the disconnect. But those words don't matter to a system that is not feeling safe. So again, it's important to validate where you're at. Say, maybe I know you're not feeling safe right now, but this isn't going to last. Or not even saying anything. Just saying right now, you can observe it. Right now I feel unsafe. And that's okay. And just meet that and let that energy pass through you. So subconscious mind doesn't speak language. It doesn't care about language. Uh, It doesn't know language. That's the conscious mind's job. The subconscious mind, unlike the conscious mind, is habitual and repetitive. So the conscious mind is uh, creative and open to new things. The subconscious mind is going to do what it's always done because that's what it's always done. It knows how to anticipate things that are going to happen and it's ready to react or respond in those moments. So it's just going to go back to what it knows, back to those associations, those neural pathways. So that's why when you're consciously trying to shift your life and your life experiences, it can feel a little challenging um, because you're you're kind of going against the grain a little bit. And a way to alleviate that is to, again, meet yourself where you're at and bring awareness to the habitual and repetitive That's going to bring everything to the conscious awareness so you can shift it. The subconscious mind also only accepts what it's given. It doesn't have the discernment that the logical, rational mind does. So this is why in childhood, you experience things, zero to seven, they say, are kind of the formative years. That's what your conscious mind has not formed yet. You're just experiencing things, experiencing energy, feeling things in your body, uh, having emotions, things like that. When you get older and your conscious mind starts to form, that's when you start giving meaning to the experiences that you had. So if you didn't feel good when someone was laughing at you, you might give that the meaning of something is wrong with me. And then you're going to carry that belief and you're going to keep seeing that throughout your life and re-experiencing something is wrong with me. And again, the subconscious is limitless, so there's many different ways that can manifest 
But that's kind of going to be the underlying core statement in there. So when you consciously assign that meaning, the subconscious says, okay, cool. We're going to make that happen for you. Again, it doesn't have judgment. It's just like, okay, I've given this example before. So in theater, when you do improv, the premise of it is always yes and. So if you're in an improv scene with a partner, whatever they say, you agree with what they say, and then you take the scene using what has been given to you, basically. And that's what your subconscious mind is doing. It's going, yes. And okay, we're going to keep doing this for you. Uh, I'm in agreement with you. Whatever you say, a subconscious mind is 95% of the brain. It is 95% of your experience. You are living subconsciously. So for example, your body, I'm not thinking about breathing right now. My body just breathes or my lungs just breathe. <laughs> my body's just breathing. Um, my heart is pumping blood. My body is doing a lot of things inside that I'm not telling it to do. I'm not like, you know, pump blood, um, digest, um, whatever else is going on in there. I'm not sitting here consciously telling it to do that. It's just doing it. It's the infinite intelligence. And this is why body work is so important because it really is a physical manifestation of what's going on in your subconscious mind energetically. And remembering that the subconscious mind is essentially your energy body. It's housing your experiences and the energies that you've come in contact with and may or may not have processed. And finally, the subconscious mind cannot decipher or tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So when you're in that meditative state, you're in that theta wave state and you're doing your visualizations, you're really living in that there. Your subconscious mind is like, oh yeah, this is real. This is happening. And you're training your subconscious mind to be okay with that experience. Now, this is also why when people start doing visualizations, a lot of times or meditations, they might feel emotional because their emotional state or the associations they have with whatever they're seeing do not match or align with the experience they want to have. So if you feel emotional when you're visualizing or even saying affirmations, that's normal if you're making a big shift, or I should just say in general, it's very typical because there's something that's misaligned in there. You may not know how that feels yet, but when you move through, you're basically training your mind to feel the way you want to feel in that situation, and you might not be there quite yet. So this is why persistence is key and practice, routine practice and consistency is key to get into that feeling state. And again, if those emotions come up in those scenarios, learn to validate them, process and release them. And the more you do that, naturally, that scenario you're visualizing is going to feel real to you. You don't have to force anything. And in fact, if you're trying to force things, you're likely causing yourself a lot of resistance and it's quite counterproductive. And something else I really want to emphasize when it comes to working with your subconscious mind you cannot force your subconscious mind to believe things. And this is where Neville Goddard talks about the subconscious mind and the conscious mind and how the conscious mind turns to the subconscious mind as its lover. And it's convincing the subconscious mind with gentleness and care that it can believe what it's telling it. So if you're trying to force yourself to feel safe when you're not feeling safe, that's your system's not going to respond well to that. There's a complete disconnect and probably such a large disconnect from that. Um, there may be times as you go along where you can notice and it's like, oh, wait, I don't feel safe. And it's like, no, I am safe. But if you are dominantly feeling unsafe and then you're trying to beat it into your mind like, no, I am safe when your body's saying, I'm not safe. That causes friction and conflict between the two. And I'm not saying that this is going to be a completely resistance-free process. It takes practice, but you can take the path of least resistance, as they say, by meeting yourself where you're at. I talk about this. I said it already. I say it a lot because it's so important. Meeting yourself where you're at and supporting yourself as you need in that moment to help your subconscious mind feel safe instead of telling it it has to feel safe. I think too that's why a lot of people use the inner child reference when it comes to personal growth and things like that because a lot of times your 
subconscious experiences are from childhood. That's where they originated. So if you are talking to yourself the way that you needed to be spoken to as a child, as opposed to maybe how you were spoken to, for example, if you're in pain and someone tells you, you're not hurt, get up, just shake it off, you're fine. But really inside you're like, I I don't feel fine, I'm hurt. I need somebody to help me and take care of me and, you know, basically comfort me then you'd want to treat yourself the way that you needed in childhood. Comfort yourself. That's what you needed. And maybe you didn't get that when you were a child, but you can give that to yourself now. And that is how you retrain your subconscious to feel safe in situations and change the associations with what's going on in its experience now. Although everything is now to the subconscious mind. So there's that. All right, moving on to the unconscious mind, subconscious and unconscious mind are used interchangeably or were used interchangeably, but the unconscious mind actually goes a bit deeper than the subconscious mind. The unconscious mind is your repressed thoughts, feelings, memories, beliefs that you're not aware of yet. So again, this is where your body is responding and you might not even notice that it's doing that yet. So to me, when you've got the subconscious, right, it's it's responding and reacting. But that's in response to those unconscious thoughts, feelings, memories, beliefs, those repressed things that you don't remember or pushed back. So that's all there really is on the unconscious mind. There's just that slight differentiation, just that the unconscious is a bit deeper than the subconscious, but really they're pretty similar. Uh, they work in tandem together. I mean, the whole system, your whole body is a system, everything's a system. So they all are working together in a kind of a way. The difference is is when you're starting to shift your conscious mind, you bring things to conscious awareness, your conscious mind is now going to lead the way, but it needs to pave a path that feels safe enough or has the least amount of resistance for that subconscious mind to get on board with it. So when I do energy healing work, and even when I went through my experience, I was trying to do too much too fast. And it kind of overwhelmed my system. (laughs) Um, This is why I really, really recommend people to, when you're doing energy work, or doing emotional release work, shifting your reality, is to take time to rest and let yourself recalibrate. Because if you do too much too fast, it just can feel very overwhelming. So give yourself grace. Be gentle. There is no rush. The conscious mind may want things to be in a rush state because it thinks that having whatever thing it's going for is going to make itself or it's going to make it feel better now. But the subconscious mind, no matter what, you can have you can have the thing. This happens a lot. People manifest the thing they want. Okay, but if you haven't dealt with the subconscious programming underneath that, sustaining it is going to be very challenging. Manifesting what you want is the easy part. (laughs) Sustaining it is a whole other story. And so for most people, the transition between where you started and where you're going can feel long. Most people want a pretty drastic shift and they want to get there fast. But your drastic shift from getting here to here is going to be a series of small little shifts. Sometimes you might do a big leap. Uh, Again, this journey is not linear. There are going to be days where it feels you feel on top of the world and there's days where you're going to be like, oh, I feel like garbage. That's okay. Meet yourself where you're at. Your body, your energy system is recalibrating. You will stabilize and you will be able to achieve that feeling state with ease and just naturally. The more that you practice that emotional validation and release, naturally you just feel better. That's kind of the key is to not change things. Accept things accept things as they are, accept where you're at, but also know that they're not going to stay that way forever. <laughs> it just might feel like that. And you might have a story about that that that's why a lot of people avoid uncomfortable emotions is because a lot of times the underlying core belief there is this is never going to end. So they are like, I don't even want to bother getting into that, like feeling that because I don't want to feel that way. And they're not used to the emotion passing. So they just kind of push it away. But the more you do that, the more problems you cause yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. All right, moving forward now, let's dive into why you're not getting what you want, even though you're following the rules. (laughs) 
even though there are no rules. So most manifestation coaches, like I said, they're going to tell you focus on what you want, not on what you don't want. And so you're doing that and um, nothing's changing. How come? Well, let's talk about it. The reason most people aren't getting what they want, even though they're following the rules, is that most people are working at the conscious level when it's your subconscious mind and unconscious mind that are creating the experiences or affecting the way it's actually more of like affecting the way that you're experiencing things. I would say that versus creating because it is pushing out experiences, but it's doing that. How do I want to explain this? It's doing that in a way because it knows how to handle those scenarios already. So when you start changing the course of your subconscious mind and doing that emotional work, it's going to change the way you experience things. So I've had a lot of clients that I've worked with and I've experienced this myself where we do the energy healing work, which is I do emotion code, body code and belief code. If you want more information about that, you can check out my website, www.myspiritualocean.com. It'll tell you all about it. But one of the greatest things is they'll come to me and they're like, Alicia, and I've even said this to myself, (laughs) they're like, I've been in this situation before, but I don't feel triggered by it. And they're like, it feels so good. (laughs) So that just shows that those your subconscious is recreating that experience in a way. But as soon as you face whatever emotions are or a narrative that are coming up and those feelings and you release them, even though your subconscious might push a similar scenario out, you're not going to be affected by it. And so that's when you really harness your power and really are in that conscious state of mind where you can direct where you want things to go. That's the challenge is most people are working at a conscious level, but their subconscious is the one that is uh, moving things out. So people are doing their affirmations and they're seeing the opposite. That's the big one, the opposite, right? I'm getting the opposite of what I'm affirming. Well, your subconscious is like, "Mm, hey, this is still going on down here. I need you to see this so that we can process this so that, uh, that whatever you're affirming can come true for you. This is what is blocking, I don't like to say blocking, but for lack, again, that conscious language, blocking your manifestations are these repressed, suppressed emotions, okay? And again, it's not necessarily blocking the manifestation because again, you can manifest what you want, but if you really want to sustain it and get out of those old repetitive patterns of pain and whatever else it is you're experiencing, then you're going to want to process these emotions and move them through. Otherwise, your subconscious is going to kick into gear at some point and be like, okay, um, things are going too well. So something's wrong. There's a negative association there, right? So there might be a belief that happiness never lasts or something of that nature. And if you're curious about what your beliefs are regarding different areas of life or situations, that's where the belief code comes in. It quickly helps you identify and release any of those associated imbalances so that you can release that belief and belief system. So I love the belief code. It's amazing. So back to experiencing the opposite. So the reason that you experience the opposite is because there's an incongruence of your conscious thought in your subconscious mind or subconscious belief. So people think that affirmations are this magical thing. Oh, I said 10 affirmations and now, you know, it has to happen. But they're actually really afraid of the opposite happening. So when you have the opposite, once you embrace that fear or embrace whatever is going on, then things can change for you. So uh, there's no magic affirmation. The reason some people manifest faster than others is their beliefs aren't as incongruent with their conscious thoughts. Everyone has different circumstances and they grew up in different circumstances and we all have different associations and we taught ourselves or gave different meanings to those circumstances. So we're all coming from very individual experiences. Okay, so this is why it's important never to compare yourself to someone else because you are an individual You have your own experiences that have gone on in your life and you have the power to overcome them. You really do. Again, the way to do that, meet yourself where you're at, validate yourself, release emotions and keep switching that narrative consistently. So when you see the opposite, 
in your 3D some questions. Does the opposite trigger you? If you feel triggered by the opposite, that is your opportunity. The opposite is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to bring yourself present into that moment, observe those emotions and feelings, and release them. And again, the more you do that, the less power that narrative that you hold is going to have over you. And you'll feel less triggered, like I explained earlier with the clients that I've worked with. So, and those are actually my favorite stories. I love when people manifest stuff, but there's something so exciting about when people are just like, I don't feel triggered anymore. And I think it's because I know that's like a very pivotal point when things are really actually starting to change for them. So if the opposite triggers you, ask yourself, do you respond and react to it the same way? If you're responding and reacting to whatever's going on the same way as always, you're reinforcing those neural pathways. So then it's going to keep you in that loop. And this is not to say shame yourself or blame yourself if you react to your circumstances, you're retraining yourself. This is a long-term marathon. If you shame and blame yourself, that's counterproductive. Give yourself grace, be kind to yourself and just take, it really is little tiny steps. Every little step matters. If you reacted and then you look back and you're kind to yourself about it, that's progress. It doesn't matter if you reacted to those circumstances. Remember, your subconscious mind just does things until you retrain it. So it's kind of like a subconscious boot camp, um, but a nice subconscious boot camp, a training camp (laughs) instead of a boot camp. Boot camp sounds um, intense. And uh, I'm all about gentleness. (laughs) in reprogramming the subconscious mind okay so anyway those are the things you can look at and see so that's why most people are getting the opposite or not getting what they want uh they're typically avoiding their emotions they're avoiding things they're showing up the same way they're running the same narratives changing your life transforming your life takes a conscious effort it does it takes bringing awareness and choosing new ways of thinking feeling and being for yourself And all of those things work together. So when you process the emotions, the thoughts naturally change and your behaviors naturally change. Your behaviors are driven by an emotion, an energy. Everything is energy. So it's really important to get to the root cause of these things and handle those, face them, deal with them. And that's when things really start to change. As I mentioned before, you can use the belief code to help you take the guesswork out of what core beliefs you may have or what are presenting themselves in scenarios that you've had, as well as release past resistance and associations your subconscious mind may have. The belief code is a gentle, non-invasive energy healing modality that uses the subconscious mind and muscle testing to help you free yourself from your past. The belief code specifically focuses on belief systems and associated imbalances, There's also the emotion code and body code, which are helpful as well. Emotion code releases trapped emotions. The body code goes a little deeper into different layers of the being, such as your physical aspects, your energy field, uh, magnetic field, things of that nature. If you are interested in learning more, check out my website, www.myspiritualocean.com. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining me. I will catch you on the next wave.